Greetings, it is I, Tantus Naraman Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue our discussion on anime series, me reviewing them for you, and then giving you some information how you can possibly adapt them to your Big Eyes Small Mouth game, your Bessem games. Let's dive into it. I've got two suggestions that I managed to pick up. One, of course, from a comment from a video, and one that I managed to pick up while I was discussing some things on Twitch. And then I have two, of course, from back in 2015, too, because we're still heading back in time with those. Let's start with our two suggestion animes, Hamtaro and Yu Yu Hakusho. So let's start with Hamtaro. Hamtaro is an interesting one because it's set in the world where all the the characters are anthropomorphic hamsters. We focus, of course, on Hamtaro, who's owned by a 10-year-old girl named Hiroku. Hamtaro kind of gets bored with his normal life and goes out on various adventures. Along with those adventures, he drags along a cast of other hamsters that he meets in this kind of gang called the Ham Hams, basically a clan of, of hamsters that he gets along with, and all of them go on these adventures. They're also based out of this kind of base of operations that was built by this hamster named Taisho, or Boss, if you really want to know in English. And so the lot of them go on various interesting little adventures, have fun, kind of do little cutesy things. This is also, may I note, a children's novel and a manga, if you want to see more information about it, just than the many hundreds of episodes of anime that exist out there. Now, for genres, of course it's an adventure. Your, the little hamsters go on adventures. That's what they mostly do. It's also a comedy. They do lots of little funny things along the way. And it's animal because it's animal characters. It's animals with, it's the lowest end of anthropomorphic animals, I would call it. It's hamsters that act like people. Now, I rate this one a three. Um, I haven't seen all of it. I did see a little bit of it back in the day and I did have to watch a little bit for the review again, get myself re refreshed on it, of course. But it's not a bad series overall, um, a little a little childish, but it has some interesting lighthearted feelings to it that make it not a bad one to watch, especially if you just want to have something that's kind, friendly, and sort of puts a little warm and fuzzy feeling in your heart. I'd recommend it then. Now, if you are using it in a Bessem game, I'd recommend 120 points. You're going to make your characters a gang of, well, hamsters. Now, they might not be the only members of your clan that they're developing. There might be other ones, but they're effectively going to have their each of their own owners, get together, go on various adventures, have little fun times, little funny things happening to them. There'll probably be comedic elements to it. And at the end of the day, they're going to be ready to head home. And along the way, they, of course, learned some friendship with each other, maybe an important lesson, just a good time overall. This is a very lighthearted game to have. Might not be bad with children, but even adult characters I can see getting into this game just to have a little bit of lighthearted fun. And that's the point of this one. Lighthearted fun. That's why it might not be a bad one to roleplay sometime. But let's move on and let's talk about the other one I want to discuss. Yu Yu Hakusho, or Spirit Detective as it's sometimes called. Now this one focuses around Yusuke. Yusuke is a delinquent and he does something strange. Something altruistic. He saves the life of a child. He basically gives up his own life. And as he's there dead as a ghost, the spiritual boat hand picks him up and takes him to the underworld, where he learns he's technically not dead. He can come back to life, actually. He has to go through a series of tests, which he does, and he manages to finally get back in his body and come back to life. Now that he's back to life, though, he finds himself a spirit detective. Someone that's effectively working for the underworld, dealing with supernatural occurrences within the human world. So he then goes along, goes on various adventures, gets stronger, meets new friends, new enemies. Maybe he makes some a few of those friends into a few of those enemies into friends. Overcomes various challenges as he improves himself as both a spirit detective and generally as a fighter and a person. Now this one for genres I would call an action. That's for sure. He gets into some cool fights, some cool abilities he gets as a spirit detective. He's, he gets some interesting friends that forms this good team of fighters. It's also a little bit of a mystery. There is an element of that detectiveness to it, because he is a spirit detective, technically. So there is an element to that. It's not probably as forefront as you'd want it to be, but there's always this little tinges of mysteries of what's going on, really, and learning the truths of some things. Also supernatural. 
He basically becomes a spirit for a while, gets spiritual powers when he comes back, deals with demons and other spiritual people with spiritual powers along the way. So it definitely is supernatural. Now I'm rate this one a five actually. As much as I have to say it, I really enjoy this one. It's a very it's a classic. This one's a classic, so I was glad someone suggested it. I was glad I was able to share it with you. Now, if you're using an Abessum game, I'm gonna actually give you a variable here from 250 to 500 points. Now, why am I giving you this points? Because it depends on sort of where in the storyline you're gonna have your characters come in. Your characters are gonna be a team of spirit detectives dealing with spiritual, supernatural problems within the human world. Effectively, what you're going to have them do is whatever origin you have your characters play out as, you're also going to want to add in a redemption story to a degree. As you can see, all the main characters, all the main fighters from the anime have this idealism to a degree that they all have done bad things in their past and they're trying to make up for it. Two of them are delinquents. Two of them are former sort of bad seed demons. But all four of them, four of these main characters, are basically on a redemption story to a degree becoming better people and that's something that you should build into your characters i do recommend it highly whatever that is is completely up to your players but you should just tell them that you really want that as a way of drawing them in and the point value is going to represent maybe how far they along they are you can basically come up with they've already come down that path for a while and you're hitting that 500 for a much bigger adventure than if you're starting at 250 or you could go along that entire path if you want a really long campaign so you can see there is a variety in the nature of this, and that's why I'm giving this big variety with that too. Big variety in the points. Now regardless, the players will go together, they'll go on their missions, they'll solve mysteries, they'll face enemies, face, face enemies that may become friends along the way, maybe make some NPC allies, things like that that's going to strengthen development of the team while they all get stronger along the way. Of course, when you're getting to that 500 end, you're not getting as much of that growth as if you're doing it for the 250, but you have to consider both ends and consider what kind of adventure you're going to run with it. I gave the option in this case. Now let's move on and talk about the two from 2015, Rolling Girls and Juko Muju no Famper, or Unlimited Fanther. Let's start with Rolling Girls, though. So Rolling Girls takes place 10 years after the Great Tokyo War, which effectively split all the prefectures of Japan into independent city-states. Vigilantes effectively representing them that fought during the war are known as bests. They have special abilities. They oftentimes effectively mercenary themselves out to various prefectures and can also work in between them, doing jobs for them to support their prefectures with other ones if someone within another prefecture should ask for their help. They'll go where they need to go. These bests are supported by a group called the Rests, basically special supporters that work with them. So our series really gets started when Masami gets injured. She is technically a best that's been hiding her identity. But her friend, Nozomi, who is a rest that was working for her, the same best that she technically is, decides to take up basically the mantle of her. Take up the mantle and it comes to doing the jobs she was promising to do. And journeys around Japan on her motorcycle with a group of friends as they basically try to take the place of a best. Now, this means they get into misadventures meeting new bests, meeting new places, going to all the developing cultures in these separate city-states of Japan as they are now. And also along the way, they begin to gather these Moonlight Stones, which have this unique ability to enhance the natural abilities of the best. So I would call this a little bit of a slice of life. We see Nozomi sort of going on this almost road trip with her friends and doing little, like, life-based things, getting meals, staying together, bonding along the way. But we then hit into some of the things that they run into in each of these prefectures, which tend to be a couple, at least two episodes. We have some action there. Because, of course, you get battles between bests, them getting involved in some of these fights sometimes accidentally, things going on that are conflicts that always need to be resolved. It's a little bit of adventure, though, too, because as their normal life is going, it's still traveling around, coming to new places, facing new challenges. So you have this interesting juxtaposition of all of these elements that fits together quite well. I actually rate this one a four. It's the one that I enjoyed quite a lot, it had some interesting twists to it, interesting concepts as to what the Moonlight Stones actually were and what they meant to the world and what they meant to the bests that used them. Now, if you're using this in a best in game, I recommend 200 points. You're gonna make your characters a group of rests that are effectively taking the place of a best as they travel around Japan. 
they're going to be going around and they perhaps will be dealing with the conflicts of other bests, dealing with other bests, maybe dealing with whatever's going on in these various preceptors that they're going to be visiting, learning the cultures, experiencing new things, adventuring and traveling together, probably on motorcycle or whatever vehicle you think is appropriate to this group. They will maybe be gathering the Moonlight Stones. Maybe you want them to. Maybe they can use them to a degree, because we've seen that in the anime they can sort of do stuff with them, but not the same as a best. A best has something special when it comes to this. So maybe you want to use a little extra points to have your characters do that. I built it into the number of points I recommended, but you could always subtract about maybe 50 to 60 to make it a little bit more realistic if you don't want them to do anything with the Moonlight Stones and just want to adventure in the world. If you want them to maybe have an ability to use it limitedly, because as you can, as I said, Bests know how to use it. Other people don't really use it quite well, and it's kind of dangerous to do it, but they could maybe use it in a desperate situation or desperate times, and you could work with them to develop something interesting along those lines. Maybe they don't choose those points until it comes up. Maybe it's a surprise. Completely up to you how you want to play it, but it's a very interesting concept of having these on the side. But the adventure of just traveling around this interesting take on Japan might be enough for you too. It's going to be your choice as the Game Master, which version you want to do. Now let's move on and talk about Jun Junko Mujo no Fanfare, or Unlimited Fanfare. So this is set in a world where strange monsters called dragons arise and basically began to destroy everything. Strange girls born with supernatural powers similar to that of dragons were born called Ds. We focus on you, the only male D to ever have been born. So he's the only male, and he's been sort of working along with some officials and government channels. And he is asked to basically go to this school, Midgar. When he arrives there, he runs into Iris and accidentally sees her naked. And the situation that goes on, I won't dive into too much. So he gets into trouble with her, and he meets his long-lost sister also. He basically then enrolls there with a job of watching the girls that are there, because there's always this threat with the power of a dragon, which is one of the only ways you can fight against a dragon, that they might give in to that power and effectively become a dragon themselves. And he's there to make sure that doesn't happen. So then each of them wields this dark matter power that they're using to fight the dragons to do that very thing, fight against the dragons, using their power against them. But watching that power, an interesting juxtaposition that you have this power to fight these monsters, but it's the very power the monsters use and it might cause you to become one. Now this is an action one. They get into fights with dragons. They of course fight with each other to train, battle and train with their weapons and such. I also call it a fantasy. They use interesting powers that almost feel a little scientific because it's dark matter with that kind of sci-fi feel, but with the dragons and the nature of things and the nature of why the girls that have the D power have them, it feels more fantasy than anything. So it does cross this line, and it really feels fantasy more than anything, but it has that kind of kind of juxtaposition. It's also a little bit of a harem, because of course you have one male at an all-female school, so it always has those very loose harem elements. It doesn't dive into it as much as some other series, definitely, but it does exist there. Now I rate this one a four. It's another one I liked a lot. I enjoyed it quite much. It's interesting because it has interesting action, an interesting concept of powers, and this entire idea that your, your very power using to fight and save the world might cause you to become a threat to the world. I, I like that concept. Now, if you're using it in a Bessem game, though, I recommend 550 points. You're going to make your characters these. Now I recommend you, just to start out with, we'll say they're all girls. And they're dealing with defeating and holding back the dragons. While they're trying to keep their own power in check, they're using this very dark matter power which can fight against these dragons and it almost can corrupt them and drive them to it. So they have to worry about this. They have to worry about falling to the very power they're using. They're trying to save the world. So they're gonna balance out battling out these massive dragons while having some semblance of normalcy within Midgard and even some training in there. Now, you could very easily have one of your players be, like, the lone male character, or you could have a male character NPC bringing in. I would really only recommend you do that if you're really aiming to have a little bit of that harem element in it. You can have some of your players basically replace the role of you in the anime, just as a combination that group of them replaces him, effectively. You know, they're the main characters. You don't need him. 
but you could bring him in if you wanted that little bit of harem side to it, or, or characters similar to him. It's up to you. I don't think this one needs it, but if you really like that element and you want to bring it in, go ahead. It's an option for you. So that's it for today. I introduced you to four more anime series, giving you a little review on them, and then ex giving you some suggestions on how you can use them in your Besson games. Of course, this doesn't mean you can't use them in other role-playing game systems. You will be required to adapt those systems on your own, but the suggestions I gave for storyline all ring true for any role-playing system, game system you want to use. So it's just a matter of adapting the abilities, the powers, and things like that, and figuring it out on your own. But regardless, if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It shows you for the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon. Link description below. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell. <laughs>